Good morning. I'm so glad that you are here to worship along with us this morning. Um, it's my great pleasure to be able to introduce and welcome our speaker. We have a guest speaker this morning. Uh, Pastor Jimmy Lee is the uh, head of Five Breads and Two Fish Ministry. Um, it's located, it kind of does ministry throughout the world, um, feeding hungry people. And uh, I'm sure he's going to share a little bit more about what it is that he does. So why don't we all welcome him together? Hallelujah. Let's all pray together. Father God, we thank you. You are wonderful, Lord. You already know our hearts, what we need, what we are struggling with. But Father, right now, it is time to worship you, Lord. So examine every each one of us. And bless, bless us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. The reason that why Jesus has come. And free us for your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now today, uh, the passage that we want to share is uh, Luke chapter 4. Uh, from verse 18 to 19. This is the verse that Jesus, when he started his ministry, he walked into synagogue. He walked into a place of worship. And he starts to read from Isaiah chapter 61. From verse 1 to middle of verse 2. And he says, hey, I came to set you free. The reason why I came is to baptize you with the fire and Holy Spirit. So he was simply saying, hey, here I am. And I'm going to do what i supposed to do. In the name of Father God. Amen. He proclaimed. It's amazing news. It's, it's a truth. So when I was preaching the same message in Los Angeles, well, I knew he, what he meant. Because John the Baptist says, you know what, I baptize you with the uh, water, but one who come after me will baptize you with the fire and Holy Spirit. So baptism of water, the words of God says, it is not to wash your sins away from your flesh, but your conscience coming back to God. So to meet Jesus in personal level, your conscience has to come back to God, which is your conscience has to be more sensitive to realize not, it's not really about what you want, but it's all about what God wants. Amen? I mean, that's why we're here. We are here to worship God because we believe, we want to seek, and we believe that God loved me enough to die for me. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. And we believe that. And we praise upon that. And we say, hey, hey, Father God, now I know you love me enough to die for me. So here I am. I trust you. So speak to me. I do it. I don't hear any amen. <laughs> amen? Speak to me, God, so I do it. Amen? I mean, Jesus is not our waiter that we can ask whatever we ask in the name of Jesus. And he simply delivers it. He doesn't do that. He is our Lord and Savior. He is our God. Amen? Are we living here in the living church? Amen, right? I mean, we believe God. That's why we worship God. So I believed it. I really believed we were doing that. So I was preaching the same message. But I realized after the passage, the 4, 18, 19, it continues on. When Jesus proclaims it, when our Lord Jesus, our King of Kings proclaims it, they didn't accept him. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus is words of God who became flesh and came down to us. It's like from, from here to here. I mean, not the speaker is there, but he just comes down to you and says, hey, here I am. I am the promise of God. I am the words of God. I mean, I'm real. And I'm going to do what my father promised to do. Wow, isn't that amazing? Himself came to you. Flesh to flesh. It's so real. So real. He's young, you know. Hey. And you don't smell God from him. But it is promise. God is here to keep his promises. Amen. So when he does that, whoa! I mean, if I was there, I was like, yeah, Jesus! Finally, you are here. Woo! 
Let's do it. Yeah. But they didn't do that. Then who is that guy? What's he up to? Right? And you know what? Then they tried to drive him out. They brought him to the cliff. And he was actually pulled by them. All the way to the cliff. Right there. And they were about to push him away. Then he simply passed through between them and just walked away. Then I realized at our worship setting, we were doing the same thing. See, we came into the synagogue or worship places. We came to some place to worship. We said, hey, hey, we came, came here. We, we came. We came to worship. But when actual promises of God became flesh and came right before them, confront them with the gentleness of God, you know, he, Jesus did not scream. I do sometimes, but he, he doesn't. He, he did not scream. He simply said, hey, here I am. And this is why I came. I came. Because Holy Spirit came upon to me first. See? Holy Spirit came upon to me, which is Jesus Christ, to me first. And I came. And I'm going to go through the baptism that you may not know about. Then he explains later. And he says his baptism is about the cross. Oh, so baptism means death. The baptism of the water. It also meant the death. When you immerse into the water, what happened? Your sin. Well, God will take that as a credit. Okay, if you believe me enough to immerse yourself before everybody and say, hey, I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that, okay? And I don't want to do it anymore. I want to change my life. But in the name of God, amen? That's why we're here. We, we trust the body of Christ. We say this is holy people of God, amen? We are anointed, appointed by God, and we believe it is absolute truth. That's why we have chosen this time to come to worship God, amen? Hallelujah! But praise doesn't end there. This is beginning. He will empower us, the power of God. He will change us with the name of Jesus Christ by filling us with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Fire from heaven above. Wham! He just comes down on us. And he said, I will prove to you. But to do that, you have to deny yourself. What do you mean? You have to deny your emotions. You have to deny your calculations. You have to deny what you know. Your systematic thinking. Because I am your God. And now you're going to walk with me. You're going to run with me. You're going to jump with me. And sometimes you, feel, you will feel like you are falling. But you will realize you will fly with me. Instead of a falling, I will teach you how to fly in the name of God. Amen? And from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, till the end of earth, he will guide you. So I said, amen. I said the same thing. I said, yeah, this will happen. Yeah, we are the light. We are the salt. We will be responsible about the gospel. Hallelujah. We want to be responsible about the gospel. Amen. We don't want us to say it. We want to live it. Hallelujah. And everybody goes, yeah. Wow. Wow. So I say, hey, as Jesus was real, let us be real. Let's go to the darkest place of the city. Poorest neighbor, neighborhood in town. And we're going to say, hey, Jesus is the answer. Amen? We're going to put your action to what we say. We're going to bring it to truth. Let's do this. Yeah. And we were kind of pumped up. And yeah. But there was a time he let us remember about five years and two fish. Hey, serving 5,000 men plus women and children. That sounds good. It's called meals on Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Hey. That, yeah, let's do this. Whoa! Bible says 5,000. We can do it. Yeah! And we all said, amen. Whoa! But after 40 minutes of worship, everybody left. So I was there after everybody left. And I felt like I am dragged to the edge. 
So I pray, Father, what do you want me to do? And he started to impound this, this words. It's just a 5,000, 5,000. Just, just that, that vocabulary, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. It's just 5,000. So my conscious baptism of water is about my conscious coming back to God. Amen? So my conscious was saying, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. And I try to avoid it because nobody knows. Nobody knows my conscience. Except you and your God. Amen? It's not about the sin that you commit in outwardly wise. You shouldn't do that, of course. You, you are a child of God. That's a done and over with. Amen? Of course. I mean, we are a child of a righteous God. Amen? We are a child of goodness. Child of justice. Yeah. Of course. We don't sin like that. But there's another type of a sin that binds you. Sin that you already know about. The thing that you already know what to do, to how, how to worship God. You, you know from deep inside of your conscience that's what you got to do. But nobody knows except Father and you. See, I was in that. So I said, okay, we got to do this. But... I was, I was kind of chicken. I, I was like, mm. I was, I mean, I know how to shout and yell about the words of God and promises of God. But when it becomes to action, I was like, mm. Mm. Then God's wind and his whisper start to come into me more. Challenge me. That's how we started to do a five was and two fish. I thought it was a one-day thing. After we did that day, 5,000 people, week before Black Friday. You know, at the city of Los Angeles, at the time, they were almost like a bankrupt. I went to the city hall, and I went to the police station and asked so where's a great place for us to do this great celebration? What are you going to do? Oh, we're going to serve like 5,000 people. Probably a lot of homeless people. I mean, they already live there, more than 50,000 people in the center of the ski row in Los Angeles. Before, before Lord touches my conscience like that, you know, I always preach like, hey, you have to love your God with all your heart and mind and soul, with your strength. And, and but you know what? Second is like this. You have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And everybody goes, amen, right? Okay, I'm going to say that again. We have to love you, God, with all your heart and mind and soul, with the strength and all your characteristics. But second is like this. You have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Ooh, it's hard here. Amen. Amen. Work in progress. Yeah, I believe that we, we were good at it. We knew how to say, when to say. We knew when to jump. We knew how to praise God. We, we were great about instruments. We were, I play jambe. My wife plays guitar. And we, we were part of a team. And we were, we were doing great. But when that was proclaimed, most of our members, if it's Christian club, members started to diminish away. Because action was harder than speak. Then, something happened. Miracle happened. We served the 5,000 people in the name of Jesus Christ. We had an amazing beef teriyaki. It was, it was a choice wine. When God gives, He gives more than best. Amen? And we learn, God is more than enough for every purpose that He has planned in our lives. Let's just say it. Can you say it if you really believe? Is God more than enough? Is God more than enough? Hallelujah, amen. Is He a creator? Is He a promise keeper? Is Jesus, does He save? Is He Savior? Did He save you? How about does He save you now? 
How about tomorrow? You see, truth is, our God, Alpha and Omega, one who starts and one who finishes, He's a creator. He keeps His promises. All we need is a faith in Him. And that faith has to require action. Amen? Because the faith without deed is dead. So we've done that. But we never knew that it would continue like this till today. It was a day-by-day thing. When we obey the 5,000 people, after all is done, we have about 20 people left, all volunteers. More than half of them are from street, from Skid Row. We have some, uh, some vets that who almost lost their minds, so they end up on the street. We had a John, the Afro-American, my brother in Christ. First day he remembered that he, he started to live on earth, he was already homeless. He was a born homeless. When we met John, he was a stone. He was so stone. I think he even forgot his own name or something. I guess if deny yourself is that matter, he was doing well. And it was like, yeah. But John wanted to help. John was 53 years old at that, at that time. This was like what? About 10 years ago? And we, st- we, we, we did it. And after we did all, all day long things, serving in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray. when we were praying, God was telling us just to say two things. First, thanks for coming. Can you say, thanks for coming? Yeah, because this is not mine. This is God's. Amen? And, like, and we have a faith, but they don't. So he said, hey, man, you don't know what you came to, but you know what? This is God's thing. Amen? And this is a start in your life. This will be amazing. This is, this is like a banquet of God. And you know what? He will serve. He will feed you. Not just feed you. He will guide you. He will teach you. And he will transform you. He will rebuild you, restore you, renew you, as God says in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 4, right? He will rebuild you, restore and renew you and he will transform you as a child of God. That's why Jesus has come. And he was proclaiming this. And he says, you know what? You know what? I will have to go through the death that you may not know about, which is a baptism. But when that happens, when the tree is lifted, he will, he will guide all of us. Amen? He will guide you and me to the cross and say, hey, let's go. Let's do this. But death is not all. It's what's after. Resurrection. Amen? And I will let you live the life of a resurrection now. Not after you die. That's why we have to die twice. Once die with the water, once die with the fire. Baptism of the water, baptism of the fire. So John the Baptist, he came for baptism of the water, which is what? Repentance. And repentance leads to righteousness. And that repentance is not about washing sins away from your flesh, but your conscience coming back to God. Amen? And I say, oh God, I want to replace my conscience. I don't want, I don't want this. I want new conscience from you, Lord. I want a heart of God. Amen? So, oh, please. So we immerse ourselves into the water before everybody and say, I'm born again. And please accept me as a born again child. I know there's still a lot of work to do. Still a work in progress. But hey, can you, can you please walk with me, teach me, accept me as a brother so I may become a part of the church. Amen? And that's who we are. But Jesus says, hey, there's about baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism of fire. I came to baptize with you. Amen? So many people follow because Jesus was doing an amazing thing. And we did an amazing thing too. And we did after 5,000 people, we said, hey, Jesus. Because we didn't know how to pray. I mean, more than 50% of them were not Christian. And they were from street. They lost the hope. Some lost minds. So we, we didn't know even how to pray. So you know what? We, we learned through the words of God. I learned through the words of God that prayer is not about your, your vocal cords trembling. Praise God that our God is not a man. God is the Holy Spirit. Amen? God is a spirit. So he doesn't hear your vocal cords. But see, he sees deep within. He doesn't, you don't have to be a great orator. You don't have to great... You don't have to become a great talker to speak to God, pray to God. Rather, you have to stop yourself. 
Stop, stop talking, maybe. Stop yourself. Stop asking for what you want, but start asking God what God wants. Because he has given you one and only son, Jesus Christ. And he says, that's, that's my own flesh. It's like him. He says, I really love you to die for you, okay? So you got to hear me now. And I'm going to show you in your life that you are chosen by me. But you have to let me be your God. Let me be Alpha, which is let me become your start. Let me start this in your life and let me end this in your life. Alpha and Omega. Amen? Hallelujah! Hey, anybody want God as Alpha and Omega? Then we praise God. Amen. Let's see if you really want this. Do you want God to finish? You want God to start in your life? That's why Jesus says, no one comes to Father except through me. If you want to go where, where I am going, which is to Father, you have to deny yourself and take your own cross and follow me in daily basis. Amen? Yes. It's a journey. It's an amazing, glorious picnic. Yes. So we did that. So we prayed together. So we didn't know how to pray. So it's okay. He says, let's just say Jesus, okay? So we, gra- we grab out each other's hand and, go, and we cry it out loud. One, two, three. Jesus! And when our screaming was about done, something happened. Because we, after we obey God, after we obey God all the way, for that daily food that we had to consume, as Jesus explained, you know, I have a food that you may not know about. My food is listening to God for that day and obey God fully for that day. Remember Jesus went to this woman at the well in the heat of the day? And he asked that woman, hey, can I, can I get a cup of water? And she goes like, who are you? Man, you, you look like Jew. Maybe he had a big nose or something. Right? You look like Jew. Why, why, are you asking? why are you asking me, right? But Jesus said, well, if you knew who I was, you will ask for everlasting water. Then she goes, oh, man, if there's water like that, I want that water. So I don't have to come out in the heat of the day like this. Because everybody was talking about her in the town, right? She was, a, she was bad news. She knew it, so she didn't want to meet anybody. She was living in, in her own jail. But Jesus came to her and said, hey, man, I really came actually to set you free. So he didn't talk about the worship and all that. And she goes, like, oh, but see, Jesus suddenly asked her, hey, uh, where is your husband, right? And she goes, like, I ain't got a husband. And Jesus goes, yeah, that's right. You had like a seventh, right? But it, it ain't your husband. One who you live now. And she was like, mm. if you, And she was thinking, if you knew who I was, why are you still talking to me? By action of Jesus. See, she didn't ask for Jesus. But Jesus went to her by intention of a father God. Amen. And she was living in her own jail, which is she could not even talk to anybody. But Jesus simply came, break that barrier, broke the barrier, just came to her and started talking to her. And she didn't even know that Jesus was doing that. So suddenly she got free from that loneliness. She got free. From that jail, the torture, tormented life that she, he, she was in, only because Jesus. I have a yellow card now. <laughs> but I know God will give you a green card after this. Amen? You know what? To make a long story short, in my half, my behalf, our ministry grew from there. Next week, he told us to do 7,000. Week after, he told us to do it every day. So we've been serving people, like four, 5,000 every day for three and a half years. Man, every day. And as, as God promised, when three, three and a half years 
is about done. God opened heaven above. We started to receive a whole bunch of stuff from God. Unheard of. It's like crazy. It's amazing. And now we give more than $15 million worth of grocery to more than 8,000 families each week. Poverty stricken neighborhood all around Los Angeles. See? But that was the only beginning. You know, God has waited for our brothers and sisters to become Jerusalem first. When Holy Spirit comes into you, right? When you are crucified with Jesus Christ on the cross, you have to really, you know, don't just think and imagine crucifying Jesus. But that's not going to do anything. It doesn't matter how, how you feel sorry about him, how you, how you really like, you know, like, oh, you are so enchanted by it. It doesn't matter. You have to go up to the cross with Jesus. Amen? Put your hand on Jesus' hand. Put your feet on Jesus by faith. And accepting, you know what, God? If, if it is true that if you love me so much to die for me, I want to know you. Amen? And confess your, your, your fragility. Accept the truth that we need, God. Amen? And say, oh, God, you complete me. I need you. I, I am desperate without you. I'm broken without you. I'm, I'm, I'm bankrupt without you. That means a poor in spirit. So Jesus says in Sermon on the Mount, if you are poor in spirit, heaven is yours. Amen? Heaven will be yours. I mean, heaven, what is heaven? Kingdom of God. You will become part of a heaven on earth. Whoa! Heaven on earth now. It is the God of I am now. God of now. Yes, he, Jesus is the king of the past. That's why we repent. Because when we repent, he becomes a king of the past. So whatever happened in the past will not destroy you anymore. Will not hinder you anymore. Because you repented, amen? So it's done. So now you are a new creation. Hallelujah. So when you're a new creation, what happened? He asked you, hey, am I still your king now? No, don't just feel sorry for yourself, but am I your king now? Say, yes, Lord. Then what do we do? We pray. We pray for now. What do we do? We say, oh, Lord, this is our prayer. Not my will, but let your will be done. Amen? As Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. So we say, oh, Lord, Lord you, you already know what I need. So I don't need to waste my time to tell you, oh, I need this. Number one, number two, number three. No, 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 no. But I seek for your kingdom. So you know what, oh, Father God, so we, we, we kind of become more smarter now. We're going to say, hey, God, don't try to explain to me. I'm not going to understand anyway, so just speak to me. Command me, I will do it, amen? Because you wish is my command, and whatever you wish, I shall do it. And when I do it, that's my worship. That's my daily food. You are my eternal manna, Jesus, so speak to me. That's why Jesus says, you know what, it doesn't matter how often you hear me. Unless you eat my flesh, drink my blood, and you become the words of God. Don't just hear the words of God. You become the words of God. That's why obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen? Listening to God is better than give Him the best thing that you think you could give. Because God don't need us. He's God Himself without us. But He loves you. He doesn't need you. He loves you. Amen? That's why I say, he, deny yourself. Let me be your God and I will show you how great I am and how great you are in Christ. Hallelujah! So he's asking us, instead of pushing him to cliff again today, as Luke chapter 4 did, he asked you, after this, what are you going to do? Are you going to drive me off to the cliff? Or are you going to deny yourself and say, Father, for God, in the name of Jesus, speak to me. I want to obey. Let me give my life now. And let me not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is yours. It's not mine. If you give me tomorrow, I will also give you tomorrow. But now... You are God of I am, God of now. 
So be my God now. Speak to me. Amen. And whatever say, that's who I am. If you say, I am the light, yes, I want to be light. I am light, and I want to act like light. So speak to me, Lord. Tell me in detail. You know, when three and a half years, when, when that glorious time was about passing by, we started to have a people coming from all over the world to see what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because something bizarre happens. Something that only God can do happens every day within that setting, that obedience setting. It's not what we do, it's what he does. It's, it is what our father does every day, amen? He simply show up in your life because he is your God. When you obey God in full capacity, he simply show up and here I am. And you don't have to prove to anybody. God prove himself. God goes, here I am, here I am. And they will start to tell you, you are witness. Because they see God in your life. You don't have to talk about God. Because God already show up in your life. Then he asked us to go to Los Angeles, from Los Angeles to Mexico. When we thought that everyone, everything was going great. When was the time, you know what, now from now we can do something. Wow, this is great. But he didn't want us to depend on funding. He didn't want to depend on people. He didn't want to depend on the, uh, uh, the systematic thing. But he just wanted us to depend on God. Amen? Praise God. So we obeyed. So we went to Mexico. Started from nothing again, but working with God. Amen? And within a year, God has given us 120 acres of land. Now we are building a Beulah Mission University and, and, and orphanages and all that. We're having... Amazing fun, and God is doing what he promises again. And after that, a couple of years, he sent me to Brazil. He says, hey, he gave me vocabulary called favela. What is a favela? I googled it. It's in Brazil. Oh, God, if it's you, confirmation, please. A few days after, Brazilian church, Brazilero church, they, they call me to become a guest speaker. Oh, there was a confirmation out of blue. Okay, praise God. We went. Started a favela ministry. In the gang-dominated land. Even Brasileiro didn't want to go in there. But God showed up again. He did an amazing miracle. Now whole gangs transforming their lives. Whole communities being impacted. San Paulo is being shaken by the gospel of Jesus. Amen. Then he sent us to Bolivia. So there we are right now. Starting an orphanage. And we started a Christian cafe. And more than a few hundred Bolivian first generation of Christians starting to pour in to worship God and praise God. See, he will speak to you. But you have to want it. See, signs and wonders and miracles, it's a natural thing that happens. It's not a phenomenal thing. It's, it's a natural thing happened to child of God. Amen? Do you want that God? Yes, we believe in that God. Amen? Then you know what? From where we are, from Jerusalem, from who you are, let us be the light. We're going to be responsible about the gospel within the city. Amen? We're going to tell everybody Jesus is more than enough. God is more than enough. Amen. And God will appear in our life. He will show you who he is. Amen. And we're going to proclaim the truth. We're not going to explain. We're going to proclaim it. And we're going to live it. We're going to give our life as a worship. And God will start to appear to glorify himself. Are you ready for this? Then you know what? Let us bow down together. You know what? Let us just focus on Jesus. Let us pray together. Let's do this. Father God, 